I'm Sarah Pergani, flying along with U.S. Customs and Border Protection. What you see here is one of eight water wells in an area of about 25 square miles, and it provides clean water for hundreds of villagers who live in this area. To us, they look like fishermen, but to the trained eyes of these agents, they see scouts working for the cartels, waiting for a good opportunity to smuggle in as many people as possible. Okay, so you just saw the inside of Mr. Yoyo's house. This, we are being told, is his kitchen right here. Another busy night for agents. While some of them were working on two different groups, we were advised that a third agent had just made another arrest involving three people who were found hiding in this area. The amount of destruction here is unbelievable. Here we are, two weeks after Hurricane Harvey hit, and businesses still in rubble. The inmates here say this pink jumpsuit is certainly diminutive of manhood. Dakota was actually trained here at Guide Dogs of Texas to be a guide dog like this puppy, but he didn't pass a requirement. He was then retrained for eight months to be a diabetic alert dog, and his skills have never failed since. Well, the latest word from city officials is behind me on the other side of the border at Nuevo Laredo. We're told the roads are completely washed out back here on the U.S. side. This levee at the entrance of the Santa Ana Wildlife Refuge will most likely be the starting point of the border wall. It'll go up on the south side of the levee where... Rocks and dirt will be replaced with 18 feet of concrete on top of it, steel bollards. Now the wall would eventually cut right through the refuge, separating the visitor center from the park. Well, we're back about after a 25 minute ride and I didn't have to use my parachute, but what I did learn was that it takes some very talented and experienced pilots to put on a show like the Acadiana Air Fest. Okay, 10 four. So the camera spotted a group a couple miles down river of our location. We had just hit the streets right with Assistant Chief Patrol Agent Gabriel Acosta. When the first call came in. The camera spotted a group of five make their way across from Mexico. Now this is limit 10. Without these oh. agents, the U.S. is completely exposed to illegal crossers. So the groups that actually come up the creek, that's Mexico right over there. And that's Rio Grande River, either by inner tube or swimming across. And crossing it takes just minutes. You can see here behind me, they think this is where the group is hiding. Thick bushes and Carrizo cane make it difficult to see and dangerous. It's the perfect cover for an ambush waiting for an agent. They lost him in the Carrizo, but they haven't seen anybody go back. Most likely they're still on our side, just waiting for our agents to clear out miles away from the field. Yeah, I had visual one running away from that group. There. Agents are getting help from the dispatch center, watching the smugglers on the move. They have a sophisticated uh, network of, of scouts in uh, surveillance, you know, so it's, uh, it's a very sophisticated operation. Turns out smugglers had their own counter surveillance. Scouts were watching us the entire time, and they had the advantage of higher ground. So we're being told that the, the group went back. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I'm standing right at the banks of the Sakata Creek, and right now we actually just saw a group of about nine people. We've been watching them for the last, I would say, 30 minutes or so when the agents first got the call. Uh, they came all the way to here, and I guess at some point somebody found out that the agents were watching. How well do you think they know their way through here? So the actual people that are being smuggled don't know their way. Um, the majority of the people that, that, we, that we catch, this may be their first time crossing in this area. They came close, but the group never made it on U.S. soil. These agents say it's a success for now, until the smugglers try to come back. You still can't believe that it truly happened. Nothing could have prepared people in Port Aransas it's still so surreal. For this. This is the uh, hostess stand, and it was up there and the, when you first entered, and it got back around here. The fury of Hurricane Harvey, a combination of powerful wind and water, left little standing. We had an outdoor kitchen out here, and we did pizzas. Just days ago, music filled Behringer's Landing Bar and Grill. People love to sit out here and eat and listen to live music. All these were windows that looked into the bar. Now the music is gone. 
replaced with the sounds of the aftermath. We pulled up in the parking lot and we just stood there and cried. It was all we could do at that point. But they're aiming to recover with the help of others. This was the service bar where the drinks were made for the restaurant. The one thing out of this whole bad situation is it's restored our faith in humanity. Just to see the kindness and the care and the concern that everybody has for one another. The amount of destruction here is unbelievable. Here we are two weeks after Hurricane Harvey hit and businesses still in rubble, unable to operate because all the damage they had. Now even though Port Aransas is a town of only 4,000 people, it is a second home to a lot of San Antonians. It thrives off of tourism and sadly, as you can see behind me, even popular restaurants like this Moby Dick's destroyed and right across the street from it. This huge building, an iconic souvenir shop in town, also had a lot of damage and has a lot way to recovery. As for Behringer, she has insurance. It was our last work. <laughs> but no telling how long it will take to rebuild. We want to make it great again and I think we will. We're going to pray that we will. Sarah Forgani, Kent's 5 Eyewitness News. Close your eyes and listen. You'll hear a soulful song from the heart. But when you take the time to look, you'll see a cry for help. Cries that are sometimes answered by volunteers, like Dr. Bill Robbins and his wife Brenda, along with five others from their Stone Oak dentist office and two from Alaska. It's been life changing. For me. They travel to Haiti to join Father Glenn Moe at the Cobinal Mission House, up? a sanctuary for the last 25 years. These families are among Haiti's poorest. They struggle to live on $2 a day. They come to Father Moe's Mission House because they're starving and need serious medical help. In the United States, we've got a giant safety net for the poorer people and there are tremendous opportunities for food and health care that aren't available here. There is no safety net for these people. This patient says her life depends on it. She has heart disease and now a serious tooth infection that could affect her heart. But it could certainly be really catastrophic in a person that's got a, a compromised uh, organ system like the heart. The relationship seen here goes far beyond treating patients. Last year we treated, we didn't cry when I say this, but last year we treated a young boy and yes, we took some teeth out of him one day. I think that was the hardest thing that I ever did because he begged basically not to have them extracted. So this time the team came back with even more tools. So you'll pull one out and they'll say, you know, they want you to get the other one too. And there's no mother and father next to them. They just come in here by themselves. And We're making some false teeth. We took out this young man's teeth this morning. To make this happen, this partial was donated by a San Antonio lab. It's an invaluable gift for this young man who has been embarrassed to smile. Yeah. Here at the Cobinal Mission House, you can see right behind me here, Haitians, old and young, waiting in line, waiting for hours for a chance to get their teeth looked at and to get dental treatment as the San Antonio dentists inside continue to call them in one by one. We're just giving the kids some paint and just kind of entertaining them while they're waiting for their dental appointment. Outside the clinic, the team found a different way to bring smiles. Yes, paper. Yes. In their five-day visit, they treated about 300 patients for dental care. You know, without being here, someone doesn't just realize just how needy these kids are. They don't have socks to wear, but they're happy. And that's what's so amazing is they're just so very happy with the lot that they drew in life. Hey, this is energizing for me. It is for everybody in the clinic. We're, we're all tired at the end of the day, but it's a, it's a great tire. It's a, it's a wonderful opportunity to be here and help these folks. Sarah Forgani, Ken's Five, Eyewitness News.